me to moderate the session, but with such eminent panelists, I thought we could have a more free-flowing discussion. Um, the panel discussion topic we have today is a secure cyber space for young India. I think uh, it's the need of the hour today and going forward. Uh, and I'm glad to have such a variety on the panel today because uh, as I had said before, we need all minds together to create a safe space for children to work online. Uh, since the focus of our current Olympiad is children and students, uh, I would like to request uh, Meera Balachandran ma'am to uh, start with her views on this topic. You know, before coming here, I was just uh, sitting back and thinking about the whole thing. And then I suddenly realized that the children who are there in class 12 today were children who were born in 2000. They are 17-year-olds. And I said they are children who, who were born in a world where there was internet. They knew everything about technology and they've grown with technology. So we can't even think of these children not having known of a world without technology. So I just thought about it, and then I said, you know, what are we doing for them? And you know, there are lots of stories. You hear parents sometimes come and tell me all the dangers, and we don't want, we don't let them use the mobile phone. We don't allow them to use that. We don't allow them to do this. But I wonder whether it's right to block things off because you're so worried about the negative aspect that you don't think of the positive aspects of these things. So this is something and when we had television and television became, when it grew as such, we were very worried about it. I remember a stage when we were never allowed to use fountain pens. We had to use those pens which would dip in the ink and write. And then we moved on to fountain pens. We were told, uh, particularly in the Christian missionary schools, that you're going to spoil your handwriting using fountain pens. So we've all been through the stages and today we are in a world where children really, I mean, I have like very young grandchildren going to class one and two, and they know everything about the internet. They know everything about WhatsApp. They're not allowed to handle the phone all the time. But if I ask them, that, can I put this picture on WhatsApp, they'll do it for me. Because they know. They've been exposed to nothing new. But I think as principal, all of us are here, uh, we need to be very cautious about some of the things that could create problems. In the newspapers you read about certain situations and it's always like this boy became friendly with me on Facebook and that's how it all began and so on and so forth. So we need to be really very cautious and I think that's when cyber safety comes into play. Another thing I was thinking of, we do school audits and we are one of the agencies for CBSC to do school audits. And then I suddenly realized, in fact, we worked with CBSC to prepare the uh, book or the book manual for audits. Nowhere have we mentioned about cyber safety. Nowhere have we looked at it. We have said that when we go to a school, we will do a safety audit of the school to see whether the fire escape routes have been put up properly, whether the buses have got first aid equipment, whether the drivers and conductors know about using that, but we never ever mentioned anything about cyber safety. I came in a little early here and I saw a little video on safety wall and the children had written all about cyber safety on that safety wall. And suddenly I thought, I thought when we do audits of schools, we must do a cyber safety audit of the school. Do the school authorities spend some time on cyber safety? And what a better way than doing it than through our Olympiads. Because when children are given these questions, they will read for it because they want to do well in it. And there will be some learning that takes place. And if principals are conscious of this, cyber safety could be one of the things, areas that we could audit. I mean, these are some of the thoughts that went through my mind when... I was invited for this seminar. Uh, I think that's about all, Pante. I don't know. As we go along, maybe we could yeah. sort of share some more ideas. But I'm with such eminent speakers here. Uh, I think I shouldn't take any more time, Anjali. So, 
should I begin with a question to Dr. Yeah. Pandey? In fact, Dr. Pandey, I was thinking, you know, you are a colleague of mine, and I know you're doing a lot of work, and uh, he's chairperson of LPSC. I was also chairperson of LPSC some years ago, and I know that his reach is really commendable. I'd like to ask you two questions, Dr. Pandey. One, how have you ensured, what, what are the measures you've taken in your school to ensure cyber safety? And the second thing is, how can you help this organization reach out to many more schools and many more children? Thank you, ma'am. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I think I will make the atmosphere a bit lighter by sharing an anecdote, you know, the children when they start writing or used to start writing, now they are writing on the screen. They used to write with pencil and adults write with pen. You know, there was somebody very rightly commented that children make a mistake and it can be erased because they write with pencil. Adults make a mistake, can't be erased because they are written with pen. But if Premji is to be believed, all of us are writing digitally and it is being locked. So, so we can't erase it. So it only suggests that we have to be very, very careful, right? Uh, uh, thank you, ma'am, for uh, posing that question. Uh, you know, what is happening is that as adults, we have to realize two or three things which are very, very important for us. Uh, number one, uh, the children as young as three years, they are into the digital world. Uh, middle school children, senior children. So at each stage, there are attendant dangers involved, okay? So in the beginning, if nothing, if even playing video game, you know, relentlessly uh, brings in some security threats there. And then you start texting, you start emailing, online purchasing, you know, socializing, online media. It, it has all those things. And we need not go into details of that. Uh, the, you know, even a simple mistake that you make and uh, and that is called a typo squatting. I don't know how many of you have heard about it. That you make one mistake in typing the URL and you will be taken to a path which is very dark, you know, and you don't know where the child has gone. Then he was trapped once to visit Bhuvaneshwar to buy a video game because they said that if you come here, then only you will get this video game. And he, he boarded a train and on the train he was taken to somewhere else and it was a, a cyber case of kidnapping. And just imagine the parents anyway, uh, I will not go into the details, somehow the case was saved and uh, you know, the people were caught and all that. No, so, I mean, it, it, is, it is absolutely uncertain word. And therefore, the answer to your question, ma'am, is that as adults, we have to educate ourselves as to what all dangers are there. So I draw a parallel that we tell children a lot of safety measures. We want young children to save themselves from burden. We want them to save themselves from drowning. We want them to save themselves from strangers. We want them to save themselves from being allured. So many things we want them to do in the physical world. I think there is a huge and even more dangerous cyber world where if we do not educate them and if we do not take care of them, things will so this is one aspect of it. The second aspect is that one is that you have to save yourself and the second is that how you can be a digitally good citizen, good user, with a lot of good etiquettes and you don't become a threat to others. So this is uh, the, the second aspect of it. And of course the third aspect is that we have to create an enabling environment and which I would uh, put as uh, something called cyber uh, value system or cyber wellness program as Dr. Anjali has mentioned in her speech. So what would be the paradigm of that cyber wellness program and cyber value system? After all, this internet is a tool which has been designed by the human beings. And therefore, the human beings only have to design a tool as to how to use it safely and how not to use it as a threat for others and not to be victimized by somebody using it in a threatening way. So we have the program, we educate them, we are educating the parents, you know. We had a recent eye checkup done for the children of five years and four years. And to our horror, we found 
that 50% of them are suffering from refractive errors in their eyes. And the only thing that you can attribute it to is they are overexposure to screens. What else can be the reason for that? Even if I discount 3%, 10%, 15% genetic disorder, 30 to 35% is due to overexposure. So the day children uh, are able to move around, a smartphone is handed over to them. So adults have a great responsibility too. And uh, uh, as a suggestion as to how we can take, so we have to have a very nice laid out cyber security education program for the teachers and also a curriculum integrated program for the children. And I think Learning Links is in a better position to do it. And my very dear friend Paman is here, probably he can guide us in finding out as to how we can you know, create a policy framework where uh, anti, very strong anti-cyber bullying uh, measures are taken. And I was just thinking before coming to this that we have come out recently with OXO, protection of children against sexual offenses. I think on the same lines we need protection of children against cyber offenses. Something like POCO or whatever name we can give it. So these are a couple of thoughts which are coming in my mind and probably we can go ahead on that. Thank you very much. Thank you for sharing that. <coughs> taking one from here, I request uh, Mr. Pavan Mughal to share his experience. Uh, you know, there is so much uh, talk about cyber crimes. Uh, how is the law keeping pace? And what is it that you would advise us to share with schools and students in that space? Thank you, Rutanji. The law is lost in the woods. The law has no clue of what the ground reality is. And unfortunately, if I'm a child and I'm wanting to look at any support from any instrument of law, then I'm disappointed. Why there's not a single helping hand which is out to reach out to me? Why? Let me give you an example. Three days back, I got this case of a child. When I say child, below 18 is ch a child. So this is a 16-year-old girl in one of the public schools, creme de la creme public schools. And the problem, children are now, because of puberty coming in, are getting increasingly promiscuous. So consequently, they are madly in love with Snapchat, the app which promises that your message once delivered will disappear and destroy itself in 10 seconds, much to their horror, even children are realizing that what the company is saying is not correct. So and there is now specific software available which now allows you to capture the message in those 10 seconds before it self evaporates. So a lot of these students have started experimenting with their own bodies, taking photographs, thinking at best it's only for 10 seconds, without realizing that the photographs get captured on the other side and land themselves up on pornographic websites. So how do you land up uh, helping this girl who is now found to a horror She's been crying the last 72 hours. Her parents are running elder scatter. And there's no effective legal remedy available because the websites which have helped in transmission are located outside India. They're not responding. And they are very clearly telling us, get us a court order. And getting a court order in India means it's going to take some time. More so, a majority of the cases are not very sensitive to the time criticality and the essence of these kinds of matters. So first and foremost, I think we really need to wake up from our legislative slumber. India as a nation is sleeping as well as protecting children's rights on the highest consent. Let me give you an example. We enacted the Indian Cyber Law way back in the year 2000. The Indian Cyber Law, those days, was one of the earliest cyber laws in the world. India became the 12th nation to enact cyber law. But to try to find the word child in that law, you would be disappointed. The word child was missing. They had to just defined broad pornography, not even had added or elements pertaining to child pornography. It was a lot of hue and cry when the amendments to the Act took place in uh, 2008. The legislature had a specific provision uh, making child pornography as a heinous offense. Today, it's not just publishing, transmitting, or causing to be published or transmitted child pornography, that's an offense. The law is fundamental further. The law says even if you browse child pornography, 
mind you, browse. That's a non available offense. Gets you five years jail time, 10 lakh rupees fine. It's a different matter altogether that from 2008 till this afternoon when I'm talking to you, not a single person has been booked in the country for browsing child pornography. Leave aside having convictions in that regard. Second, the children are not waiting for the law to come in. Children are going left, right and center. We had this case of a five-year-old boy in a day boarding school, uh, one of those schools which allows free Wi-Fi to all students and allows students to carry the devices, to use the school's Wi-Fi to hack into the principal's account and leave message. Now, if that's happening in five years, I think there's something that we as uh, nation builders, as parents, as responsible citizens need to understand. We cannot uh, mindlessly hand over devices at the hands of children. What is the alternative? Shall we stop? We stop. What happens? The peer pressure is so huge. They're going to abuse us. And today, it's amazing the kind of lingo that children have started using, visiting their own parents, and using four letter words in WhatsApp communications. It's amazing. I think as a nation, we don't know which slide, when is the slide going to, uh, to pause, leave aside uh, to stop at one point in time. So in this scenario, we have nothing in place. Good news, the Indian government has said, I'm going to be amending the Information Technology Act this year. So a couple of things are required. I cannot allow as a nation my children to be having devices, throwing them into deep waters, into the ocean, without them realizing that what they do online on these devices is legally admissible evidence and be used for incriminating purposes and also for prosecution. So without sensitizing them, it will be of no consequence. I've been talking for quite some time that you will need to incorporate cyber law and cyber security law as an integral component of your school curriculum from the first class onwards. Because children are not ready. Technology is not ready. Forget about children, let me ask the people here. Is there anyone in this room, anyone, who's not on WhatsApp? I don't see a single hand. See, we are a nation that's united by WhatsApp. WhatsApp has become India's official national religion. That being so, we are mindlessly putting all kinds of stuff up there without reading the terms and conditions. So if we as adults, are not reading the terms and conditions. How do you blame the, the children? They're not even expected to uh, read this. And mind you, WhatsApp is ruthless when it comes on the terms and conditions. It says whatever you're going to publish, audio, video, image, text, is public information. You have no privacy. And most of the children don't even know that they have no privacy on WhatsApp. But they'll end up sharing all kinds of stuff. So when I talk of cyber wellness, I'm disappointed because the law has not come on that far. Or should be this year, hopefully with these amendments, we should look at positive, cogent uh, responsibilities to put for intermediaries and stakeholders. And I think it's funny. Uh, we are forgetting the important role of service providers in this entire ecosystem. Service providers cannot be allowed to take a hands-on approach. I'm an American company. I'm governed by American laws. I will go by American community standards. Hold on. That argument has failed in China. It's failed in France. I see no reason why it should not fail in our country. How can you apply an American community standard to an Indian ecosystem, to an Indian audience, where the entire social economic realities are completely different? So we need, as a government, uh, to prescribe certain specific proactive responsibilities on stakeholders and intermediaries to protect you. Now, if a child is on, on the line of fire, don't, it's, it's the worst thing to hear from a service provider I can't act till such time you get me put over. I mean, that that kind of lethargy of approach needs to give away. These guys need to be made responsible. If they don't respond back within, say, 12 hours, I'm not even talking about 24 or 36, I'm talking of 12 hours, then I think action needs to be taken against them. Because a child, once devastated by a 360 degrees, 24 by 7 exposure online, it becomes impossible to get the child back onto a track of normalcy within a short period of time. It's going to be with him and scar his rest of his life for all times to come. So I think law needs to play a very important role. We need to come up with specific coverages 
of cyber crimes targeted at children. So the idea of uh, the specific law, as Dr. Pandey was saying, on protecting children on cyber liberties and on issues of cyber offenses is a very, very urgent, immediate, burning need of the time and needs to be addressed. We can incorporate that under the Information Technology Act. We can come up with a new legislation. So now the government has all the numbers. The political will is there. I think digital India has to base itself on the foundation of the digital children. Because these digital children will form the basis for the subsequent growth of the digital nation. But we need to empower them. We need to create far more awareness. And about cyber security, I think it's a disaster. The correlation between children and children. Now, if a child is on, on the line of fire, don't, it's, it's the worst thing to hear from a service provider, I can't act, kill such time, you get me whatever. I mean, that, that kind of lethargy of approach needs to give away. These guys need to be made responsible. If they don't respond back within, say, 12 hours, I'm not even talking about 24 or 36, I'm talking about 12 hours, then I think action needs to be taken against them. Because a child, once devastated by a 360 degrees, 24 by 7 exposure online, it becomes impossible to get the child back onto a track of normalcy within a short period of time. It's going to be with him and scar his rest of his life for all times to come. So I think law needs to play a very important role. We need to come up with specific coverages of cyber crimes targeted at children. So the idea of uh, the specific law, as Dr. Pandey was saying, on protecting children on cyber uh, liberties and on issues of cyber offenses is a very, very urgent, immediate, burning need of the time and needs to be addressed. We can incorporate that under the Information Technology Act. We can come up with a new legislation. So now the government has all the numbers. The political will is there. I think digital India has to base itself on the foundation of the digital children. Because these digital children will form the basis for the subsequent growth of the digital nation. But we need to empower them. We need to create far more awareness. And about cyber security, I think it's a disaster. The correlation between children and cyber security is something that we are not preferring to talk about. Without realizing that children are the weakest link in the chain. But some children are getting more smarter. Now, WhatsApp is important. But WhatsApp is slowly on its way down because new other encrypted uh, over-the-top applications are getting, gaining momentum. Uh, applications like Telegram, applications like Signal, where children are saying, well, we are going on these ones because there's news that WhatsApp is sharing our information. Why that? They say that they don't share their information. The fact is, there is documented information in the public domain of them sharing information. And further, when they're monetizing your information, you don't exactly know at what point of time the information with respect to children are going to be monetized shared, transmitted, or transferred in any manner whatsoever. So this is important. And finally, I think we need to create a culture of cyber security by creating more awareness. Law can, at best, have a very small component. It can have an element of deterrence. But the deterrence needs to be strong. Today, I uh, engage in child pornography. The law says, OK, five years imprisonment, a lack of his mind. I believe that five years is much lesser. It needs to go to 10 years. I think we don't not only need to have speed, different provisions of law. We need to effectively implement the same, which we are not able to do so. We don't yet have a specific cyber crime conviction in the country pertaining to child pornography. This is despite the fact that so many pedophiles are existing. In fact, the Indian market is full of pedophiles. The tier 2, tier 3 cities and tier 4 cities are like havens for cyber criminals who go out there because, well, there's nothing out there. And uh, with no law enforcement mechanisms to effectively support children, it's like a green, green field for these things. And finally, I think we need to inculcate more awareness amongst children about the legal ramifications of what they do. Because the Supreme Court, in a recent recent judgment, has now said, we are going to make WhatsApp messages admissible as evidence. One proposition has been now reiterated by the Madras High. So today when a client comes to us for any matter, my first question, what do you have on WhatsApp? <laughs> and lo and behold, a trophy invariably comes from And we are able to use that. So imagine if the allegations or the averments made by or against the child on WhatsApp starts to get misused, it becomes a different ball game. I think it's a huge issue, but I'll pause here at this moment. Thanks. Thank you so much. Um, I think my biggest takeaway from that is the law will uh, 
uh, you know, get into shape when it will. But all of us in this room can be, uh, you know, proactive and have the, uh, you know, philosophy of prevention better than cure. So if we all work with our children, create awareness, sensitize them, uh, a lot of issues won't happen at all. Uh, so thank you for that. Uh, uh, I will now go on to Mr. Shrikan Sinha. Uh, Shrikan, would you like to share with us uh, the extensive work that NASCOM is doing in this area? Uh, thank you, Dr. Anshil. In fact, coming after Pawan, I think Pawan has put it in such a crisp and clear manner that, you know, where the whole problem is and, 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 and it doesn't get limited to there itself. So, NASCOM has been, of course, we are the industry part of the government of India. We create, co-created the curriculum on digital literacy, etc. But one of the recommendations as part of the PRSG on which I am also uh, you know, sitting has been that we should include cyber safety as part of the curriculum itself in the 20 hours of the curriculum of digital literacy. So definitely we are looking at how that can be incorporated over there. Um, over the years, if you look at the IT industry itself, IT industry has been, you know, uh, if you look at 4 million people are part of the IT industry itself. And as you rightly said, it's our responsibility to help our children understand as to what exactly is happening over there. Because as uh, Pawan rightly said, you know, law is a deterrent. I think prevention is better. And that's where NASCOM has been playing a role. We have been doing, uh, you know, workshops, etc. on that aspect also. But I think what is important is, is an Olympiad kind of a thing which uh, you have started to actually and, and uh, learning to add to congratulate you on it. Because I think that's where the importance of this entire thing would lie. It would actually be the school and children, as, as Paul rightly said, as first class onward, we, because we are giving them these devices, they should understand, uh, you know, it could be, uh, how harmful it could be. With a knife, you could, you, uh, you know, cut vegetables or you could murder someone, but then, of course, person needs to be aware of what it could do. Similar is the case with cyber security and, and, and these devices. One side, we talk about one billion people, you know, uh, one billion mobile phones, we talk about digital literacy spreading across. But the, the biggest challenge which is happening today is even when they are playing games online, etc., the person who's playing along with them, who claims to be a 16 or 15 years old kid, may not be so. The identity could be completely, uh, you know, fake. And that's where, uh, you know, children also need to understand as to what, like, in a typical thing, and I'm sure all the school teachers over here or the educational setting over here know about the good touch and the bad touch. Similar thing needs to be also done in, in, in uh, you know, school curriculums where what is good online, what is bad online also needs to be communicated in as clear uh, terms as good touch and bad touch, which is very, very important. Um, and I think if we look at the role of IT industry, uh, being also uh, you know, aligned to, and, and that's where if you look at the services part of it, etc. I think uh, we could play a much larger role as an industry body itself, and that's where uh, we are proud to partner with UNICEF on, on, on the Child Protection Online Initiative, etc., where we could actually make things happen. So, so it's important. So, and and. And as uh, Pawan uh, you know, also mentioned that most of these websites which are there are abroad. So, so you really can't control them. And once, and, and tracking them is also not easy simple. Therefore, it's also important for everyone, not only in this room, but everyone in our networks also, to, if you come across a website or anything which is, you know, you find offensive, it should be reported so that, uh, you know, the faster it is brought down, at least the exposure of that website getting to our children is lesser. And that's where I think IT industry can play also a huge part and is doing and, and, and you know, uh, contributing more there. Thank you. I now request um, Andrew to share his thoughts on this topic. I think with your international experience, we'd like to learn what are best practices and what we could learn from your experience, Andrew. Um, thank you very much. Um, I'm quite humbled to be on a panel with so many experts in this area, so um, I will do my best. Uh, I, I'm actually, um, I'm an optimist in this area. Um, 
I actually, uh, I, I'm reminded of um, uh, the very famous Danish king of England in 1020, uh, King Kudut, who in order to make a point to his counsellors that there were certain things it was just not possible to stop, sat in front of the tide as the tide was coming in and got very wet. Um, having told the tide to stop and the tide didn't stop. But his point was, there are some things you can stop and there are some things you can't. And the pace of change and the pace of, in a globalized, uh, 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 a globalized information world, uh, this is our present and it's going to be even more our future. And it is a, an area of huge opportunity, of huge um, potential for um, both any individual child, but also for society at large. And yes, it brings with it some attendant difficulties, but I'm also very mindful that myself, I'm, I'm nearly 60 years old, and I remember very clearly the days before, uh, before the web and the internet, and um, writing my PhD on a, a, a computer, a little abstract, which had 256K capacity, I had to save a new file every 10 pages, and now, and then going to start work where we had one desktop computer between three people. Now in my own house I have, uh, uh, the, you know, I don't know how many different bits of digital devices and computers and tablets and smartphones and my son is just completely uh, embedded in all of this world. And I actually feel that we're going through a transitional period where those of us who were pre-digital like myself, are in a kind of a catching up with the change of pay or the, the way the world is changing. And that many of the things that we see as deeply threatening in cyberspace actually are things that have come to our attention because they're happening in cyberspace and there's a degree of fear uh, as adults not so familiar with this. Whereas if you look at actually what happens, cyberbullying I think is a really good example. Cyberbullying is a big problem. The figures that you mentioned was, is a, were a big problem, and it's not just in India that cyberbullying takes place. This is a global phenomenon. But one of the things that has happened is that, that attention has also now been drawn more onto ordinary bullying. And ordinary bullying is probably at the same levels. And the, what the cyberspace has brought is a new vehicle or a new medium through which it can take place. One which has, I think, important characteristics which are Problematic, which is the anonymity which, uh, uh, in which uh, bullying can take place, the lack of controls by somebody having to be face to face, in a sense, with the person they're seeking to bully. And I think that's an important area where the cyber world is very different from, from, um, from the, 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 the um, should we call it the analog world that we uh, also live in. But anyway, I'm optimistic, I'm optimistic because um, I actually think that. Uh, the kind of path that you've been talking about today and, and the Learning Links Initiative here, this is Olympiad, is a fundamental way forward. It is about actually uh, literacy. It's about the understanding of the implications of action. It's understanding that when you put something up on the web, it's there, that's it. It's, uh, you, you know, things can be taken down, but by the time they're taken down, it's going to be too late. It's understanding that somewhere in the United States, probably the day after tomorrow, a company is going to be selling your browsing history. And what is the implications of that, as it were, for you, in terms of how you behave in relation to um, uh, the, the, uh, the, what you do on the web? Um, I think we, as adults, have to understand the way that children use the web, and we need to understand that well. And we will, of course, um, and this will be an ongoing thing because the pace of technological change is so enormous that what is true today will maybe probably not so true tomorrow. Um, but we do know that children use the web in multiple different ways, but actually there's a number of common themes. Um, playing games, meeting people, uh, making social contacts, and not necessarily physically meeting them, but meeting them socially, social media, of course. Um, of course, education and information etc. Um, and that's the thing that I find most exciting about this area. Now, we have to, as adults, I think, be 
uh, these kinds of literacy programs where teaching children the implications of different kinds of behavior, that is extremely important, point number one. And this is globally, I think, the way that people see this as developing. Um, point number two, and I think this has been touched on, the significance of industry, the industry itself taking responsibility for what happens, uh, both in terms of their own content, but also the platforms that they provide to others, and taking responsible, rapid responsible decisions, I think has been touched on. And this, I think, is very important. And thirdly, this, it cannot be seen as a purely national issue, and I think others have alluded to this. The issue is that um, many of the providers are international providers on one level, I mean, the Facebooks and the Googles of this world, but then also there are the, 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 the offenses which may take place are often happening with websites posted yeah. somewhere beyond national boundaries. So any single nation, basically nations have to coordinate and they have to work well together. And this is an area which doubles, or even, I don't know, doubles completely the wrong word, perhaps it multiplies by a, a, a factor of 10, the complexity of the legal side of things, um, in the sense that um, it's not just the issue of having legislation in one country, it's having consistent legislation across a number of countries, and that is extremely important. Um, so there are, I think, um, I think it's this combination of different measures which will help create a safer internet world. In my view, it will never be completely safe. And we shouldn't expect it to ever be completely safe. And this is speaking to somebody who's worked professionally in child protection for many, many years. Because the rest of the world isn't completely safe and never will be completely safe. We need to find the level of where there's a balance in terms of what's... Uh, that people are able to have the power to navigate their way through these risks, as well as preventing and reducing the risks in the first place. Um, I feel that our concern with this area, in 20 years' time, people will look back at us and maybe think we were a little bit quaint that we were so worried about this. Um, that's not to diminish the issues. The issues are definitely there. Um, but the fact that um, we are so worried about them I think is something which is a phase, I may be wrong, but there's a phase that the world almost is passing through as the universality of the digital world becomes more and more pervasive. So as I said, I'm extremely optimistic about this area with all the attendant risks and I do commend very much this initiative which you started because I think it's absolutely hitting it the right place. It's the question of actually People being, um, and, and, and I think there will be others who will learn from this experience, and so please document and, 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 and you know, publish and communicate the results of how this works. Because I think that this is, in the end, the answer. It's actually people's ability to, in combination with the law, with their legal action and some responsible business behavior, but it's actually people's ability to understand and to navigate through the side of the world, which I think is fundamental. I think this is a global realization that people are coming to. So thank you, Mr. Thank you very much, uh, Andrew. Uh, I am an optimist too in this domain. And therefore, we are very excited about the Olympiad reaching out and educating people to be safe. Uh, and as you rightly said, the physical world also has its unsafe moments and spaces. So, how we can work with our youth, our educators, uh, you know, and uh, as I said, prevention better than cure, uh, sort of a philosophy. So thank you for sharing that. Uh, the other point uh, uh, regarding having international, uh, you know, engagement, I think the government can play a role in that so that the legal aspect uh, gets covered more effectively. Uh, in fact, uh, our team is ready to take this Olympiad international as well. Because uh, the more we understand the content that we are sharing on this, through this Olympiad, it has relevance globally. Uh, so maybe the next time, uh, the next uh, time we launch it, the next phase of it, as I said, this is going to be a series of Olympiads. Uh, we may open it out for an international audience as well. So thank you for that. Um, I know we need to have some time for the audience to ask us questions as well. So, if some of our panelists have any other comments, I'll have them share that. Or the, 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 the question and answers, yes. Fact, I just wanted to ask uh, Shikan, uh, to the best of my knowledge, uh, the Prime Minister uh, constituted a task force, and I think NASCOM was in the, in the center of that, to create a cyber security environment in the country. And I believe education was one of the important pillars of that. Would you like 
can you enlighten us something on that? Uh, you are absolutely right. In fact, uh, an, an organization was created which is called the Data Security Council of India, uh, you know, uh, for the entire thing, which is uh, part of the NASCOM group itself, where they are coming up with policies and, and things like that. So that definitely is there. So has something out, uh, come out in the public domain? Yeah. I am not the right person because uh, I, I don't represent that now, so I would not be able to comment on it. But yes, definitely work is in the progress of what I've heard. Any questions for the panelists? Yes, please. Uh, sir, as you, uh, sir, enlightening us, Mr. Dugal, that uh, cyber law is uh, shortly coming into picture. I just want to ask, can we design such an ecosystem, a cyber ecosystem, where we link uh, every new opening account on social networking sites? Can it be linked to uh, Aadhaar API so that the age can be verified? Why do land into problem? First, we should curb the problem at, uh, at least at children level. We can cover it up by not allowing students or I mean, uh, maybe till a certain age, only adults could join this community. Can we do something in this? Thank you for your question. In fact, I completely endorse the thought process. There's a need for creating a cyber secure ecosystem for children. How we land moving in that direction is an option that the government has. Had. You give us the idea of trying to link the opening up of any social media account with that hat. Now that is fraught with its own set of challenges primarily because Aadhaar has biometric information. In the moment you're going to link that in the context of uh, usage on a social media platform which is not physically located in India, you could potentially have the challenges of biometric information and connected stuff flowing out of the territorial boundaries of the country which could actually potentially be even exposing the children. And uh, already we are beginning to see a large number of private players have started building their own private army of uh, biometric uh, thumbprints uh, under the dark of so-called Aadhaar authentication. So misuse is a bit large, so we have to avoid. But more significantly, assuming we go that way, the children are not going to wait. They will find 10 different indirect ways of bypassing the ecosystem. And for example, today in India, a child is presumed to be a minor and is incapable of entering into a contract before he uh, achieves the age of 18 years. Uh, Facebook's official standards, it needs to be minimum 13 years. I know of children who at the age of four, four and a half have got their own Facebook accounts. Now, uh, trying to pull this into that ecosystem could be very, very problematic and would bring across its own distinct challenges. I think we'll have to come up, come up with some kind of a mechanism that does not get uh, lost its way in the woods by legal challenges or by legal actions, but something which needs to be done more voluntary. But the question is, how do we do it? When we were children, we also would not listen to the talks of our parents. Uh, we were still relatively obedient than what today's generation is. But I think it's only a question of relativity. But uh, there are no fixed golden balance answers that I can give you right now. What I can say is the need for a secure ecosystem is an absolute urgent need of today's time. How we end up moving towards that direction, it's, uh, we'll have to look at the pros and cons, but I think any methodology we can adopt, so long as all rivers lead up to the ocean, and so long as we ultimately land up achieving our objective, even by keeping up with baby steps, I think it could be a human service to the child, to the child cause as a whole in India, but I think there are still a lot of challenges in human health space. I think uh, that was covered extensively, yes. Thank you so much. Any other question? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Um, I thank all the panelists for the very, very enlightening uh, thoughts. Uh, what I feel is that uh, whether as a child or as an adult, whenever we come into um, Whenever we come across any new instrument, we start using it without reading the user's manual. And the same thing is happening with this uh, cyber clients and cyber bullying. Why not we start educating? Because, you know, as you have said that WhatsApp has lots of conditions. Or the other uh, Facebook accounts or Google accounts or whatever uh, uh, social network you join, there are number of conditions are there. But since there are... Uh, 
plenty of things are written there and they are written in the very very small words um, uh, not even the in, in the readable form so we are not able to we don't have the patience to read that so why not for the children some uh, major points are consolidated and be spread amongst them so that uh, they get more aware about this Thank you. I completely agree. That could be done. Maybe some 10 pointers. No. They can't read the entire stuff, but maybe 10 important points. At least they can be more sensitive. I think a lot of uh, schools have started that. And maybe we can share some of those uh, experiments with you and see what the feedback is. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Thank you. 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 Thank you.
goes to what we call as informal sector. So very close outside Delhi, Moradabad is there where we have gone and ourselves seen because we work very closely with the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology on the e-waste awareness program. Because two years ago at, at NASCOM function, the Prime Minister had spoken about that, you know, we have to be conscious and a program for awareness has to be done. So you're absolutely right. So you need to have collection centers. You need to have, uh, you know, uh, people who are aware of how to actually ethically and safely uh, dismantle. First it has to be dismantled, then it needs to be recycled. So that entire thing needs to be understood and, and, and done. So yes, it's a huge challenge and the government is working on, on it towards uh, you know, uh, ensuring that to be done. Thanks. So I'd like to thank all the panelists uh, for a very interesting and interactive session and I hope the audience benefited from the experience of each one of them. So thank you very much.